I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about ignoring women causes them to give up and leave. Okay, so this is a really important video because I actually see situations where a guy has a really good chance with a girl, she's really into him, but he doesn't give her enough attention and she leaves, okay? It's important to really understand that relationships require relating, connecting, right? A connection. You often hear people talk about, oh, I feel a strong connection. I feel a strong chemistry with that person. But that means you have to constantly relate with them, connect with them to keep that connection strong, okay? So, if you don't continually maintain an effort to connect with that other person, it's going to cause that connection to fade away, to end, or to get um, neglected to the point where the other person can't take it anymore. This is why you have to work on your attachment issues, okay? Oftentimes, the very early part of dating comes easy for people, but as you uh, start to connect and really form a strong bond or attachment with that person, your attachment issues are going to come up and their attachment issues are going to come up. Now, obviously, you can't be responsible for another person's issues, but you have to be responsible and work through your own. We all have attachment issues, okay? But if you don't work on yours, it's going to cause problems on your end that your partner is going to get frustrated and upset about. Now, when you work on attachment issues like doing the workbooks and the creative healing course, not only are you going to work through yours, but you're also going to be able to understand the people that you date and their attachment issues. Okay. So even though they lack in certain areas, you'll be able to navigate that easier and to work through those problems better. Okay. Because, Issues are going to come up and hurt the connection. That's just the way it goes, okay? In the beginning, it's often exciting and easy and it feels magical, but after uh, any, you know, significant amount of time, you know, when you get to about a year, that's when attachment issues are really gonna come out, okay? And if you're neglecting your partner, you're neglecting that connection. You're no longer relating to them. They're often going to feel abandoned. Now, there's more to it than just that. Obviously, uh, you can smother somebody and that will squash an attraction and someone will lose interest as, as well. Uh, but this video, I really want to focus on the ignoring part of it because if you ignore your partner and neglect them, they're going to get frustrated and tired and they have to walk away. Not that they want to walk away, they feel like they can't take it anymore, okay? So today I've got an email coaching with a guy who's close to about 30 and his girlfriend uh, is in her mid-20s. And they said, he said that the first year of dating was great. Right? And so often we see that. He says, I used to go over her house every weekend because her family liked me. She came over my, uh, to my house often. She told me that she felt secure and motivated to finish school because of me. He says, I got my dream job in late 2020. My new job was really stressful and I was getting comfortable with staying home due to telework. 
She kept mentioning how I should try and visit her more often. So this is actually telling me a lot, okay? He's stressed at work and he's getting comfortable staying at home, not doing much. And she's saying, I want to see you, come visit me. And she's asking for what she needs. She's literally telling you, this is what I'm talking about, where if you don't work through your own issues, you just kind of become lethargic and stuck and not understanding that there's another person here who's not getting their needs met, right? So she was missing this guy, feeling disconnected, and probably just started feeling frustrated, like, well, I can't keep doing this if we're not going to see each other and we're not going to do things and we're not going to have a good, strong connection. He goes on to say, I could feel her becoming distant. But you might say that she was already feeling that from him. And so she was frustrated. He probably didn't pick up on her being distant until she was already frustrated with him. He goes on to say, she would only come to see me when she needed something from me. I found that a little bit curious, but okay. Whenever we were together, she would ask, if we ever broke up, would I be willing to stay friends with her? All right, so you can see there's a big problem here. She's already thinking about that decision. She's already thinking about breaking up with him and trying to, you know, kind of plan what's going to happen. Is he going to be my friend? Is he going to not talk to me anymore? She, she kept asking, right? So it shows she's continually thinking about it, okay? It wasn't a one-time thing. Yeah, so she had been really frustrated for a while. She blindsided me by breaking up with me through a FaceTime call while my best friend was right next to me. Okay, so that's pretty brutal. Uh, that's pretty selfish. It's pretty immature to break up with somebody on a FaceTime call when they're not in their privacy or not, you know, alone. You know what I mean? Like, that's rough. Um, I don't know if he felt blindsided altogether or just because she did it like that, but, um, I, I, it sounds like he had some hint that this was coming. Her new semester had just started and she was stressed. She told me that she didn't have any time for me anymore, let alone for herself. And I said in this coaching, um, part of that felt true but part of it felt like an excuse. I've just been doing this long enough to read between the lines on those little things. Um, I believe the part that she was stressed, but the whole thing about not having time, uh, that she didn't even have time for herself, I was just like, mm, something feels off about this. I found out later that she told my brother another reason for the breakup was that she didn't think we had similar interests. Okay, uh, now, again, I feel like there's some truth here, but there's more, it's like the tip of the iceberg, right? So what's going on with this? Let's see a little bit further. A week later, I told her it would be best for us not to talk anymore, but she told me she still wanted to be friends. Okay, but obviously you're not going to be happy with friendship, and what does she even mean by friends, right? It's one thing that people don't even think about a lot of times is what does that even mean? I caved in and continued to be friends. In what way? Three months later, her family invited me to go on a one day campus trip for her sister. I went with her entire family. However, she had made plans to go skiing with her friends. All right, so that tells you at this point, her interest level was not there, okay? He was invited to go with the whole family someplace. If her interest level was high, she would have been there. She made plans to go somewhere else with friends. Already very, very suspicious to me. I sent her a text later how I wish she could have gone with us and apologized for not being there for her more. She responded by telling me 
She would have gone if she didn't go skiing. Mm -hmm. And not to be sorry because what's done has been done. Now that's, that hurts. I'll t okay, I'll tell you that hurts. Because she's giving off the vibe of like, I don't even care anymore. That's done. I'm not still concerned about it. I'm not upset about it. I'm over it. He's trying to apologize because he's still trying to connect with her. He feels guilty. He feels bad. And she's kind of giving this vibe off of, oh, don't even worry about that. What's done is done. And here's why. She told me I should try to find another person with similar interests as me. Okay, listen close here. Then proceeded to tell me that she had recently started seeing someone with similar interests as her. So you could tell unconsciously she was telling him to do what she was doing, right? You should find somebody that has similar interests to you. And that's what I've done. Her unconscious gave that away. Hmm. She said I was welcome to visit her and her family anytime. I responded by saying I'm not going to visit her or family anymore because it would be awkward and I didn't want to intrude on her new relationship and then went into no contact. Well, I would have done the same thing. I've been in no contact for about 40 days now. It doesn't hurt so much as before, but I still have feelings for her. I got back to working out at the gym and aiming for my next promotion. You should be working on your attachment issues because I wonder how neglectful you might have been in this relationship or unable to see what your partner is asking for and not, then not giving it to them. Because if you do that in your relationships, you're going to get dumped. It's just a reality. You have to be able to maintain a connection and listen closely to what your partner tells you. Because your partners aren't often going to be kicking and screaming to tell you what they need. They're going to say it like nicely. And if you're not able to hear it because you're not attuned to them or because you're focused on your own issues, they're going to leave you. And this is why I tell you guys over and over again, you have to work on your own attachment issues and how to be a good partner. The Creative Healing Course, the workbooks are all about working through your own issues, giving you skills to be a better partner, learning to navigate relationships, learning to see your other partner's needs. All of these things are absolutely critical to maintaining a connection. And the reality is most of us don't see that in our own family life. And yet we continue to unconsciously act like our parents did, right? In many of those unhealthy ways and patterns. Okay, she still goes to the same gym and I've seen her with her new boyfriend. And it bothers me because of how fast she was able to move on. It's really painful, but it happens a lot, okay? Now she's got the fantasy that this new guy is gonna meet all those needs that you didn't do, okay? And you can be hurt and angry that she left you for another person, but if you've been a neglectful partner, why should they stay? If somebody repeatedly asks you to meet their needs and you don't do it, how long are they supposed to tolerate that, right? You got to think about these things. Would you want to date you? If so, or if not, you better figure out why you wouldn't, right? It hurts to hear, but if you don't make these changes, people are going to continue to leave you. And I'm certainly not saying that it's all his fault, but I'm just looking at the information that I have in this email here, right? But yeah. It does really hurt when somebody moves on like that. Do I still have a chance to get her back after her getting to a new relationship? Well, obviously not right now, right? She's excited about this new guy and has fantasies about how he's going to be and how great and wonderful he's going to be. And it won't be long till his attachment issues come out and maybe they won't last, but a month or two, sometimes longer. It's hard to say, but you could hear from her again. She could start coming up to you, approaching you again at the gym. But you really got to understand what happened here, okay? You got to really realize that 
you have to make a real effort to connect with somebody and keep that connection, especially after relationship has been going on for a while and people start to take each other for granted. Um, now, yeah, it is important to have similar needs and interests as your partner. That, that does always help. I'm not going to say that it doesn't. But I wonder if that was really the reason she left or because she had uh, kept saying she wanted to see him and wasn't getting enough time with him. So if she comes by the gym and uh, looks for an excuse to talk to you, you got to be relaxed. You got to be casual, confident. Don't come on too strong. And understand that she's trying to figure out if you guys could be together again and what would be different. Why would it be different? So you got to really work on those things to become truly different. And it really takes time, guys. I know people tell me after two or three weeks, they're like, I'm different now. I've changed. No, you're not. No, I'm sorry, but you're not. You may be more aware that there's a problem and you may be more willing to do something about it. But... The changes you've made in three weeks are not going to, they're not going to truly impact your connection in your relationship. And you don't really have those skills any more than uh, you've gone to the gym for three weeks and you're a completely different person. It takes time and consist consistency, a consistent effort to make those changes. Do the work, continue to improve your relationship skills, work through your own issues and see what happens in the future. I wouldn't be surprised if she starts uh, coming by you at the gym, saying hi, but not right now. Not when she's um, more interested and excited about where this new relationship is going. But you always got to do the work. Regardless of what your ex's interest level is, stay highly committed to the personal growth. I often see people give up when the ex's interest level drops or they think they're never coming back. It can change like that. And I see it happen like that all the time. So regardless of your ex's interest level, keep doing the work. Keep learning how to be a great partner. Keep learning the skills to be a better partner in your relationships. And either your ex will come back and you'll blow them away or you'll blow somebody new away that you're crazy about. Okay? So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you want to get my help personally, you could do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coachings and I do Skype. Of course, Coach Margaret is available for Skype coaching. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to askcraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.